Hey guys, this is uh, Mo Mitha. Uh, recording this video in um, response to the post that I posted a couple of weeks ago about the external bell siphon. Uh, a lot of people were asking as far as the construction. Now, I did post in uh, a blog post uh, with the instructions on step by step as to how I got that done, uh, but I figured I might as well also do a video. And this is my first time doing a video ever, so I apologize for any. Uh, for the quality of the video and my instructions if they're not so good. But uh, to get started, uh, let me show you a couple of things that uh, I need, you know, started with the, the PVC pipe, the qu three quarter inch PVC pipe, three uh, quarter inch to one and a half inch reducing or reducer bushing, uh, along with some other tools. So let me uh, show you some of the tools that I made this uh, external bell siphon with. All right, guys, so here are some of the things that I used to make the external bell siphon. As you can see here, I've got a three-quarter inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe. I've got a, a three-quarter inch to one and a half inch uh, reducing bushing or reducer bushing. And then I have a 60 grit sandpaper with a drill and a three-quarter inch uh, hole saw. Now, the reason we need a hole saw is because if you look at the actual uh, reducer you'll see let me bring it into the camera there is a wall a lip that's taken out here which uh, which prevents the pipe from uh, going through and through now what we need to do is we need to get rid of that lip because we actually do want the pipe to go through and through all right so to get rid of the lip first thing I did was I put the I, I got a little uh, uh, sawhorse, uh, put a little piece of wood on there, uh, and then I took the the three quarter inch bushing. That's that's the hole right there that I just worked on one. I took the three uh, three quarter inch to one and a half inch bushing, put it down there on the wood, and then taking the drill and the hole saw, uh, I went through and right there. Let me bring in the camera, and I cut through that lip as much as possible. Now this this uh, hole saw is not exactly three and a quarter inch. Uh, I, forgot, I keep forgetting the actual size of it, but it's not exactly three and a quarter inch. So it doesn't actually take out the whole lip. It, it leaves quite a bit behind. So what I did next after I cut it, after I cut off the lip as much as possible with the, with the hole saw, I took the took the 60 grit uh, sanding paper and I basically just wrapped it around wrapped it around the uh, sorry it's kind of hard to do with one hand while I'm holding my phone trying to record the video but it, basically I just wrapped it around uh, as tight as possible over here around the uh, the hole saw then I took the, oh, let me put the saw down for a second took the bushing turned it upside down and oh, the paper's not gonna stick on there with one hand, but just imagine that there is the sanding paper out there. And then I just went through and uh, just, you know, grinded off the, the remainder of the lip. Now, one thing I did realize or come to find out is the, the wall that's inside the bushing. Uh, let me show you the one that's done. So here's the comparisons from before and after. You see the hole, there's the lip sticking out there and there versus this one. There's no lip in there. Uh, also another thing as I was saying I just realized is the wall inside whether it's with or without the bushing, it's not exactly straight. There, There's a little uh, offset part I guess you would say where it's raised here in the center. So with that uh, sandpaper I had to kind of go through it uh, so just you know, pretend, just imagine that there's the uh, uh, sanding paper on it. Basically, I put it down on the uh, on the wood uh, bench right here with the sandpaper on it. I kind of just went back and forth, just grinding it around, just spinning it around, and grinding off as much as possible. And then I would try to put the uh, PVC pipe through. So you see right here. As I'm pushing it through, I would look and see as far as it would go. Let me show you from the front. It was just going up to here initially. 
took a little red marker and marked around the uh, around the area where it was stopping and then just kept grinding off till the red marker disappeared or it was grinded off kept pushing it even further and then as uh, it would grind off more it would keep coming up and more and more so just keep marking it so that you grind off enough of the PVC to allow the pipe to go through and through let me put it down here so now now it is not sliding through very easily which is what we want we don't want it to be a very smooth slide we want it to be very hard to push it through okay so there you go now the, the pipe goes through and through the three quarter inch to one and a half inch reducer all right guys so the next step you're going to need or the next piece that you will need is a t uh, this is a one and a half inch to one and a half inch by three quarter inch uh, t now initially the t that i used in the post that i posted before I had gotten a one and a half by one and a half by one and a half. Uh, I did not realize that they come in a, a three quarter inch as well. So for this build, I'm using the one and a half by one and a half by three and a quarter inch. Uh, so I, this way I have one less reducer to use because the one that is right there. So this is, this is the one and a half by one and a half and the one and a half. And uh, here is the uh, extra reducer that I had to use. But being that now I'm using this guy, it already has a three and a quarter inch uh, outlet here. So that's one less reducer I have to use. So kind of cutting down on the cost. And uh, basically you would take, now this, this length right here, now of course I've kind of exaggerated just to show as far as how far I pushed it through. Pipe, you want to push it through uh, just as this right here. The height of, uh, of this pipe right here, you want to make sure that this length right here uh, basically is what determines the level uh, in your grow bed as far as how high the water gets before it starts to uh, starts to siphon. Uh, so that's that's one thing you have to keep in mind. Now mine is I'm using these half barrels, uh, and so in here you see the pipe right here the bell siphon uh, external siphon so the pipe goes up to here but I want to say roughly about an inch below the edge of the uh, of the grow bed okay so that's what's going to determine the height as far as how much you want to push this uh, this pipe through All right, I just realized in the previous clip that the uh, reducer was put in uh, I have put the reducer in upside down so this is how it is right here Next, I'm going to take my T, which is right here, and it would basically go on top and sit on the, uh, on the reducer. Now, I'm not going to push it all the way in because uh, it's, it's very hard to take it out once it's all the way in, but basically, you would, once you're ready to build, you would push it all the way through and you know, make sure that there's no gap here. Now, you can uh, cement this using the PVC cement. Uh, you definitely do not want to cement the uh, reducer right here you do not want to reduce you do not want to cement this uh, because this way at least initially because when you build the siphon if the height of the standpipe is not correct you can you know move the reducer pull the pipe in and out to adjust the the height of the water level that you want or the standpipe all right so secondly you would take the t put it on the three quarter inch all right, so the next thing you're going to do is I've got a one and a half inch PVC pipe and here is a end cap. So with this T, uh, sorry guys, again, I'm just recording one hand with my phone. Bear with me, I apologize for this. And then you'll take the uh, one and a half inch PVC pipe, put it over the stand pipe and put it into the T right there. Okay, and then you'll take the uh, little uh, end cap, and basically that goes on top of this. Okay, so if you if you if you look at this, and if you if you know anything about a bell siphon, guys, this is nothing more nothing different than a regular traditional bell siphon. Only difference is that the intake, 
you know, normally you would you would cut out slots over here where the intake would be if this is an in-bed bell siphon. The only difference is this being an external bell siphon, this is where the intake is going to be instead of, you know, cutting out slots down there at the bottom. Water comes in, goes up, starts uh, spelling over into the standpipe, creating a water lock, which uh, compresses the air and it just causes a bell siphon to go through or to initiate. Now this pipe right here, this is an external long pipe. I Like I said, this is just one of the spares of with uh, what I'm working with just to show you guys how I did the bell siphon. All right, so uh, the length of the pipe sticking out at the bottom of the bell siphon, basically I have just left it long because it's just a uh, uh, pipe that I haven't really cut according to the size I want. But if you notice the one from the post from before uh, again this is even further longer than than I wanted to be but I just haven't determined how far down I wanted to go so I've just left it on there but then I stick a little 90 uh, on top of this uh, just creating a little bit of back pressure which uh, helps initiate the bell siphon